Hey guys and welcome back to you Nico Dev. Today I'm going to show you how to implement Firebase authentication on any provider. So on Google provider, with the Google sign-in provider, with the Facebook sign-in provider, with the Twitter, any provider that is allowed on Firebase. I'm going to show you how to implement that using Firebase authentication with REST API on Unity. Now just for the sake of this example, we're only gonna be using Google provider, but all of the other ones are going to be pretty similar and maybe I can give you some guidelines or also do custom videos from them. But let's begin with our final product. This is how the application is going to look like when this tutorial is finished. So as you can see, we have two buttons here. One is going to be get Google code. And if we click on it, we are gonna go onto a page. Let me go on full screen. Where it's basically going to tell us to choose our account. I have no idea why this is in Italian, by the way. Uh, I can put it in English. There you go, choose an account. And I can choose an account from my, you know, from my list of Google accounts. This is my main one. This is my school one. Actually, I don't wanna show the email for that. So I'm probably gonna blank that. Uh, anyway, once we actually signed in, as you can see, we're gonna have to copy this code onto our app and once we're done, we can actually sign in with Google and as you can see, once we signed in, it's actually going to return us right here a lot of info about the user. As you can see, it's gonna return us our user ID and also our ID token. And if you watched my Firebase authentication video that is going to be linked in the description, you know that if you have these two values, you can actually, you know, the, the user is logged in. You can do any request as this user because you have a unique identifier for the user and you also have an ID token that tells Firebase that, hey, I'm this user, I'm authenticated and I can do this request. So once we actually get this info, we're done. So today's video is going to be focused on how to actually retrieve this info without having to sign in with an email and a password, but by just clicking a button or signing in with Google. Now before starting, I actually wanted to show you that if you go on Firebase where the application is hosted, and in, in this case my project is called Nico the Bot for no reason, as you can see we can see that there is a user uh, which has a Google provider and this is the user ID. As you can see this user ID is the same as the one we have here on Firebase. So yeah, we actually logged in using a Google provider. Now this project is already finished and it's up on GitHub, but we're gonna create a new one and trying to start from scratch so I can show you all of the different steps. So here you go, let's create a new Unity project and let's also create a new Firebase project. There you go, it's doing it. So while Firebase is creating the project, I'm gonna quickly work on the UI. And there you go, the UI is done. Also, our Firebase project is done. Before continuing, just for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna create a folder called scripts. And inside of this, we're gonna create a script called the UI handler. All right, so in the UI handler class, I've added a reference to the input field and also two functions that are gonna get triggered when we click on the buttons. Now let's put our UI handler onto the main camera for now and on each button, let's add an on-click listener to the main camera, which is going to trigger the correct UI handler function. Let's also make the code a little bit bigger so you guys can see it better. And this thing can go over here. Okay, nice. All right, right here, we also have to add a reference to the input field. And bam, we, okay, I didn't do that, I missed that. I have really bad aim, but there, we are done. Okay, UI-wise, this is completed. Now, we just have to go here and you know, um, add some code that is going to happen when we click on those two buttons. And here comes the fun part, naturally. Okay, so let's go on to our Firebase project, let's go to authentication and let's add a sign-in method. So for this example, we're gonna use the Google sign-in method. As you can see, we just need to uh, do this right here and then enable it and we have to configure this. I'm gonna configure it to my own email because whatever. And we actually don't need to do anything else here, we can just save. Okay, so I will follow for this tutorial this reference website that you can see in the description. Anyway, from how I see it, there are three different steps on how to implement this system onto your application. 
The first step is to actually ask permission to the user. So you will click a button or whatever and the user will be redirected onto a page and in that page the application will ask for the permission to the user. Now this first step will return a code in whatever way and this code will be used in the second step. Yes, exactly, because the second step is going to transform this code that the user gets into an access token. The third step instead is going to be transforming this access token into a user itself and putting that user onto Firebase. So we're gonna have their user ID and their ID token, which is what we need for Firebase authentication. Please notice that the first and the second steps are different based on what provider you use. I mean, the structure of those two steps are going to be the same, but you know, the way you implement it is going to be different based on what API you use. Well, the third step is always going to be the same, because each API, the Google one, the Facebook one, the Twitter one, is going to return you an access token, which you can use to uh, get a user. So the third step is going to always be the same for any API. So let's actually start with the first step. We need to send a request to the Google Out 2.0 server. And if you're using the Facebook API, you're gonna send a similar request to a Facebook server. Anyway, we basically have to send a request to this URL and we have to include as a parameters all of this stuff. I'm going to quickly explain what each parameter is. The client ID is the ID of our, we could say, application, so of our client, and basically this one is gonna be given to us by Firebase, so we don't need to worry about that. The redirect URI is actually going to be the page where the user lands in after they granted their permission, and this is actually going to be imported in a set. The response type is always going to be code, so we don't need to worry about that, we're just gonna hard code it to be code. The scope is actually going to be the information we want to retrieve from the user. So if we are doing an application uh, where, I don't know, we want to get, I, I'm saying something stupid, I'm saying something silly, like we, I, we want to get uh, the number of videos they uploaded on YouTube, the scope is going to be videos uploaded on YouTube and all of the YouTube information about the user. In our case, the scope is just going to be getting the basic information of the user, but based on the scope you use, uh, the user is going to have to grant different permissions. All of the other ones are recommended and, you know, who cares? But yeah, you can read through them and implement them from extra safety. Uh, the link is going to be in the description. Alright, so the only thing that we actually uh, haven't figured out yet is what the redirect URI is going to be. And now we actually need this because when we retrieve our code from the Google API and that code basically says, okay, the user has granted permission, we have to somehow give this code back to our application. And there are several ways to obtain this code, but the only two ways that are compatible with desktop, and we want to do this for desktop, remember, because we're using REST API, we're using Unity, which, you know, we want to be compatible for everything, is option 2 and option 3. If you are doing an Android application, you can basically use option 1. Now for this tutorial, I'm using option 3, manual copy-paste. So basically the user, as you saw in the beginning of the video, is going to copy-paste the code onto the application. Now as you can see here, this is not recommended, and I'm using this only, you know, because I'm doing this tutorial mainly based on Google authentication and not on, you know, how to actually retrieve this code. But in a uh, future video, I'm probably going to show you how to implement this option, which is a loopback IP address. Basically, the difference between these two options is that with option 3, the user will actually get onto a page and retrieve the code, copy it, and paste it onto your application, while option 2 will do this automatically. So basically, option 2 will uh, redirect the user onto a custom page created by you, created by your application, and this page is actually going to listen for any values and it's actually going to send those values to the application. So the, the code that the user gets is going to directly go onto the application. This is much simpler uh, from the user perspective and you know, it's, ba it's uh, a better system overall. But I'm gonna probably dedicate a video just for this. So be on the lookout for that, subscribe. Anyway, we're gonna use the manual copy paste and as you can see right here, it gives us details on how this is going to work. And if we go down here, as you can see, if we use the manual copy paste, the redirect URI is basically going to be this value. 
Alright, great, this is step one. Now let's implement that. Okay, let's create a new script called Google Out Handler, I guess. Okay, we can make this class static and remove mono behavior. So this class is going to have a function which is basically going to do what we described before. So it's going to do uh it's going to call this endpoint. Alright, to actually do requests and calls, we're going to use a library called REST Client, which is actually a really cool library, and you should all check it out. You can actually download it from the asset store. There is this one. I actually showed it in a lot of videos of mine, but you are also gonna see it in the description. And once we import it, bam, it's going to work. Okay, by the way, from the REST client, be sure to also remove the demo scene, because we don't need it, it's just, it's just wasting space, okay? This is just a demo that shows you how, the, how it works. I actually forgot to remove it from my GitHub repository, but it's whatever, okay? Just, just remember to remove it, we, we don't need it for now. And basically, how this library works is just we have to do REST client dot post, and we can do a post request to any address. Now, the address is going to be this one, and we actually don't have to post anything, so we can just put the object that we have to post to null. Alright, right here let's also add a reference to our client ID, which is going to be a string, and also, also uh, add a reference to our client secret, which is we are going to see later. And now, in order to retrieve these two values, uh, you would actually be tempted to go onto your Firebase authentication and get them from here. Uh, where is it? Uh, where is it? Okay, here you go. But these are actually not the values we need, because these credentials were created having another system in mind. They weren't created for the manual copy-paste system, and therefore they're not gonna work. So just go on Google Cloud Platform Console, right here, and once you actually go to your project, we can go to API and Services and Credentials. And here we create a new credential, which has to be an OAuth client ID, and has to be set on other. This is really important. So once we created this credential, this is what we need to use. This is the client ID and this is the client secret. Also, be sure to not be like me and actually hide all of this information. Don't, don't share it to anyone. This is the client secret. Uh, you know, this is needed to validate your requests. So don't show it to anyone. This right here should never be showed to the public. But naturally, this project is just a test, so I don't care if you guys hack it. Anyway, now we have to set all of the parameters that we need for our request and let's get back here and as you can see we have all of these parameters down here. So we can just do uh, like this and do client id equal and put the client id. Bam! I'm just gonna quickly do it for all of these. So the redirect UI uh, is going to be this, uh, whoops. Okay, then the response type is going to be always code. Okay, the scope, what should the scope be? So if we go here, we can see a list of scopes and there are really a lot to choose from. If we go right here, which is step two, it will say that the ID token uh, for the next step is only going to be returned if we use one of these scopes. So we are forced to use one of these. So we're just going to set the scope to email. All right, and I guess we're done. Actually, no, we're not done with this, because this is not going to work. Right now, we're just doing a POST request to this URL, but we actually don't want to do a POST request. We actually want to send the user here, so that the user can actually give permission. So we don't actually have to use REST client, but we have to, uh, to open a browser, so that the user can actually see this page. So, sorry, instead of doing REST client POST, which we are, which we are going to need in the future, let's just do application.openURL, and we can remove this stuff right here, and bam. So basically, once we call this function, that is going to be the um, Unity is going to open a browser, your default browser, to this page. And this is basically step one. After the user grants their permission, we are going to get a code by copy-pasting. The user is going to copy-paste the code right here in this input field, and we're gonna get it once we call this button right here on Google, on click Google sign in. So when we click on get Google code, we should actually call this function right here. So let's do it. We do Google out handler dot get user code. Also, these two variables don't need to be public. There. All right, so now let's go ahead and do step two. Once we actually get this code, we need to exchange this code with an ID token. So that 
part is right here exchange authorization code for refresh and access token now uh, if you use the google api so if you're using a google provider you're gonna get the id token right away but if you're not using a google provider like you're using facebook or anything else you're only going to get an access token but that is fine there is no difference between the two at the moment uh, you can plug those in in step three and you're going to get an id token anyway so it doesn't really matter. For the sake of simplicity, since we already have the ID token though, we're gonna be focusing on this value. But yeah, if you're implementing this for Facebook, you can just take the access token of the Facebook API that is going to be returned by a similar uh, request and then plug it in onto step three to get the user ID and ID token. If this sounds a little bit confusing to you, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna implement it right now and you will figure it out. So we just need to do a call to this endpoint and use these parameters. As you can see, we have everything we need. The code is actually the one that the user is going to copy paste, so it's going to be this one. The client ID and the client secret, we already have them. The redirect URI, uh, we can just use the same as this one, we don't really need it. The ground type always has to be authorization code, so let's just not change that. And we actually don't need to use a code verifier because we didn't create it for step one. Remember, that was only optional to do. Let's create a new method right here, which is going to be exchange out code with ID token, and it's going to ask for a code. And now we actually need to do rest client dot post request to this endpoint right here. Bam! And we actually not, don't need to post anything because we're actually going to give the information as parameters. By the way, just a little bit of a note right here, you can actually do a custom request using um, REST client API right here and do something like this. Let's actually initialize all of the members so you can see. So yeah, right here we have a variable which is a dictionary which are all of the parameters. So instead of putting them right here where it could get a little bit messy, you can actually include them right here. So you can do a new dictionary and then just put the parameters inside the dictionary but you know for the sake of simplicity we are gonna use this method we're just gonna include them in the url so like we did from here so the code is going to be equal to the code we can just copy the client id from here because i'm too lazy to type it again the client secret is going to be similar redirect uri is going to be exactly the same and finally grant type is going to be authorization code Okay, this post request is actually going to return us something we need, an access token and an ID token. We actually, as I said before, we just need only one of these two. For the sake of simplicity, we're only going to focus about, uh, sorry, focus on the ID token. So if we, do, if we do dot then right here and do a response, okay, this, this line is really long. Let me, let me chop it. Is there a way I can chop it, please? There. Okay, this looks even weirder. It's all right. So right here we have this response, and this response is actually a JSON, uh, which is going to have the object, which is this object right here. Whoops, yes, this one. From this object we actually just need an ID token. Now this object is actually a dictionary of a string and an object, because it cannot be a dictionary string string, because as you can see expires in is not a string, but it's an integer. So we cannot describe this as a dictionary of string string, uh, so the only way to actually deserialize this into an object is to create a custom object for this. I will show you right now. So let's create a new class which is just going to be, uh, I don't know, uh, what should I call it? Okay, let's call it Google ID token response. And as always, this doesn't need to have mono behavior or anything. It actually needs to be a serializable field, which means that it can be serialized and deserialized. There you go, and we can remove all of this stuff we don't need, and all we need is just a string, which is going to be id token. Now, this name has to be the same as this name right here, or else it's not going to work. If you're using Facebook, probably it's going to be called something different, perhaps it's just going to be called access token, so let's just do access token. Alright, so now this object is going to store our id token, but how, now how do we actually deserialize the JSON into that object? We can actually use a really cool class to do that, which is called full serializer. I showed this in different videos, but you can check it out on GitHub. The link for this class is also going to be in the description, it's really awesome, you guys should give it a star. And basically to install it, we just uh, need to, you know, download this and just copy the source folder onto here, so in assets, source, there. 
They actually already include a wrapper in the documentation uh, that actually lets you serialize and deserialize stuff pretty easily. So let's just copy this and create this class. String serialization API. I really hope I didn't misspell that. There, and let's just copy paste this. Okay, so now let's actually download the repository and let's get the source. And we can extract this right here. And for the sake of, you know, being aware about what this is, let's just rename this folder to full serializer. There. Uh, now, as you can see, once you import all of this stuff and it stops lagging, uh, everything is going to work. So this function is gonna um, get an object and turn it into a JSON. This function is going to get a JSON and turn it into an object. So here we can just do string serialization API dot deserialize and put the response dot text. But I believe we also need to put the type of the object we want to, you know, deserialize into. So we need to do type of and then the class that we did before, which is Google ID token response. So this is going to return an, an object. So we're going to just call it, I don't know, we're going to call it data. Yes, var data equals this, and it's gonna be treated as a Google ID token response. Now, this Google ID token response is going to have an ID token. So there you go, we actually retrieved the ID token from um, the function, the, from the method, from the request. And so we're gonna create a delegate or a unity action so that this will get returned. So we now just need to return a string, and we're gonna call it callback, and right here we are gonna do callback data dot id token great so now this method is going to return us an action with the id token so if we go back into our ui handler well <laughs> this is big compared to this okay we can just do google out handler dot exchange out code with id token and we're gonna have the code right here as you can see because it's the code dot text from the input field and then we're gonna have the action which is just going to be uh, id token and then like this bam so this is step two completed. We have the code because we got it from step one and we transformed that code into an ID token or an access token. Now we need to use this ID token to actually create a new user or sign in a user onto Firebase. And so we're actually done with this page because we are done with using the Google API. If you were to implement this on Facebook, you would be, you would be done with the Facebook API. Now we just have to go onto the generic page, which, the, which is the Firebase Oat REST API. All of this is going to be linked in the description, by the way. So this third step is going to be the same no matter the provider because we got an access token which is always going to be generic and that can be translated into a Firebase uh, application, into a, fly, a Firebase sign-in. All right, and the method we actually need to use is this, sign-in with OAuth credential. And as you can see right here, we have a different example for any, uh, let's see, for anything you want. So an example for Twitter, but all right, this is the endpoint as you can see. So since this is not related to Google Out or anything else, we're just gonna create a new class for this function. We're gonna call it Firebase Out Handler. Gonna be static, it's not going to be mono behavior, blah blah blah. And sign in with token is going to be our class. And naturally it's going to have a string, which is the token, uh, which we retrieve, uh, we have retrieved from before. But it's also going to have another string, let's call this ID token. But it's also going to have another string which is going to be the provider ID. And basically, if you don't know what this means, right here, if you remember at the beginning of the video, the, the, there used to be a user here, which was the Google user. And basically, as you can see here, if you set the provider correctly, right here is going to say this user is logged in using Google or Facebook or Twitter. So that's why it's important to set the provider. So this is going to be a post request to this endpoint. So let's just do it, restclient.post. And now as you can see, we need an API key. So we're gonna create a new uh, variable, which is going to be a constant uh, string, which is the API key. And we can actually get our API key from our project settings right here. As always, be sure to keep this secret. We can put it right here, bam. And right here, we can just put API key. Now, this post request is actually not going to be null. Uh, this time, we're not gonna use the information as parameters, so right here, but for this endpoint to work, we actually need to post some data on it, as you can see. So we need to send a payload to it. So let's just do a var payload equals, and this is going to be some JSON. And here, let's just send this payload. 
Okay, we don't actually need to worry about, you know, writing the JSON ourselves because this as, a, you know, a, an example, we can just copy it from here. Boom, and just do, wait, let me concatenate it first, then. Okay, and then let's do Alt, Enter, and as you can see, we have all of the JSON ready. We just need to modify some stuff. So the post body is going to have the ID token, which needs to be uh, our ID token. And the provider ID, which needs to be provider ID. As you can see, the provider ID is going to be Google.com if you're using the Google provider. But we're gonna make it. We're gonna make this generic. So we're just gonna say provider ID. The request URI can stay localhost because we don't actually care about this. It, this could be anything you want. We're gonna just set it to localhost right now. Return secure token should always be set to true. Uh, this one is said, uh, you can set it to true or false based on if you want to check for these problems. But for the sake of this example and what you actually should do is set it to true. Alright great, once we actually did this request we can do response and just for the sake of this example we are going to debug that log that response. There, now we actually need to call this function and we are going to call it from the UI handler and it's going to be Google out handler. No, sorry, Firebase Auto Handler dot sign in with ID token uh, and as a parameter we're gonna have the code, the ID token that we got right here as a parameter and then we're gonna have the provider. Since we are signing in with Google, the provider is going to be google.com and basically this function right here is going to create a new user onto Firebase if there isn't one already and then it's gonna return us all of the information we need to actually authenticate our request. And if you want to know more about how to actually authenticate database requests, the video is going to be in the description. It's basically the Firebase authentication video. Basically, I do the same thing, but using email and password, and then authenticate database requests. But it's basically the same. But basically, once we got the user ID and the ID token, we are done. We have everything we need for the user and all of the information we need to authenticate our request. Okay, great. Now let's actually check if this works. Okay, this should be pretty much the same as the application I have on GitHub, uh, which is the one you're gonna see in the description of the video. If we click on get Google code, we are gonna say, okay, yes, it's going to still be in Italian. <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, we're gonna have our own project. If we click on our name, Okay, we have the code, we do this, we click on the code, we sign in with Google, hello? Did I actually, did I actually put the on click for this button? Yes, I did. Alright, I see the problem, a small misspell, <laughs> there you go. This has to be client secret, not client secret. You probably all saw that and were screaming at me. Copy the code, sign in with Google, and there you go. It took a while because it created the account, but here we go. We got all of the information about our user. Awesome. And now if we actually go onto our Firebase console right here and we go onto authentication, we're gonna be able to see, yes, our newly created user with my email, with my provider and with my user ID. Anyway guys, if you really enjoyed this video and want to see more, I, I plan on doing more videos maybe with other providers or maybe I plan on showing you how to actually, where is it? How to implement the lookback IP address method as opposed to the manual copy paste method. You know, I'm gonna probably do these videos in the future, so if you wanna check them out and, you know, uh, be updated on when they come out, be sure to hit the notification bell and subscribe, and also leave a like if you learned something from this video. I would really, really, really much appreciate it. Anyway guys, that said, I hope you really enjoyed this video, it was really amazing to make, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. See ya! Oh, everything is going to be on GitHub, all of the code, all of the links in the description, so go check that out.